seven, six. Okay, we're back here live in Boston, Massachusetts. This is HP's Vertica Users Conference. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm joined with my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Peter Fishman is here. He's the director of analytics at, at Yammer, obviously part of Microsoft now. Um, Pete, welcome. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Yes. So Yammer, you guys have the acquisition. Um, you guys were a startup, home run, great company. Uh, e, e, you know, e Enterprise 2.0, the E Enterprise, whatever people call it these days. But you know, obviously, an important part of the collaboration is, is connecting to social data and collaboration. And so I got to ask you, you know, that's that's a big data problem, and so it's a platform. And, but now you guys work for Microsoft. You're still using kind of separate. I mean, give us the update on Yammer. What's what are you guys at right now in terms of the Microsoft? You integrated in. You still get being left alone. Yeah, you know, uh, obviously we think that uh, we'd love for Yammer to have as big of an impact on people's working lives as possible. Um, Microsoft has an incredible reach. Um, working with all the teams from Office uh, gives you a, a tremendous opportunity. Um, we think that social is going to be a big part of the story going forward, and uh, we think in terms of enterprise social, uh, Yammer is a tremendous offering. You know, we were talking around on our intro this morning about obviously Vertica was an acquisition with HP, and you know, things change. Right? You get the wind at your back, and you get a little bit more muscle. Huge huge install base to work with, so I'm sure it's probably changed your game significantly. Um, but with Vertica and respect to HP, also there's been a great relationship with Microsoft uh, and HP. Um, you guys still have been on the front end of a cutting edge market, and that is social collaboration, social networks within different distinct user groups. Sure. It's a different channel, it's not a clean sheet of paper, you've got different legacy architectures to deal with. Yeah. So there's a lot of talk about different data sources, so you must have a lot of experience with that. So tell us, what's the state of, that market right now because you know some say it's been stalled, some say it's just hasn't even been breaking out yet. So what's your view on that? Uh, you know, I think that uh, obviously, you know, when you're when you're talking about an integration, you're talking about a lot of a lot of different challenges. Uh, among them, uh, data. You know, it, it, you know, when you're sort of in control of your entire pipeline, uh, you're able to make sort of the decisions that make the most sense for you. Um, also, when you're talking about the scale of a startup, uh, you're projecting forward how big you're going to be, but you're not necessarily there yet. Uh, whereas, obviously, uh, the scale of Microsoft is, is just sort of unthinkable uh, on, on some <laughs> level. Uh, There's so a lot of data sources out there. I mean, you do roll into any enterprise, right? You still have challenges on the data side. Sure. You know, and uh, you know, we, you know, as, as an analytics team, want to touch uh, the entire business. So we want to go sort of horizontally across the entire business, not just affect sort of the product, not just sort of well instrument our software and then use, use those pieces of data. But um, also you want to pull in things like uh, data from your CRM platform, dynamics for us. Um, you're going to want to pull in data from your marketing platform. So, uh, you know, a number of, uh, of different data challenges come up as you start to take on uh, different data sources. And of course, you get a, a lot of the real value uh, once you start combining a number of the different sources. So talk about the big data strategy for you guys on the analytics side. It's analytics, you got Tableau here, it's really kind of got crowded, they went public, obviously mm -hmm. visualization's important. And we had the uh, spill games on earlier, talking sure. about the use cases, how they use data to create the user experience. You guys kind of have to do a little bit of both and, and all of the above. What, what, what is the philosophy and what are some of the challenges you have right now that you're innovating around? Well, you know, uh, a lot of our philosophy is around sort of cheapness in the sense of uh, we want to deliver insights uh, cheaply uh, in terms of the, the actual economics of it, but sort of uh, simply put, uh, we don't uh, go too deep into um, a lot of our uh, models or visualizations. These are um, what gets you the answer in the sort of simplest fashion. So we have a lot of uh, really like high, high uh, firepower brains on the team and we ask them to deliver insights in basically as simple a way possible. So, so not to show off their brains by being smart, but rather by uh, doing simple things like, like counting. Uh, so I think that, uh, you know, obviously we have a lot of homebrew um, in our front end. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we've built our own 
uh, sort of front-end tools, which have become a, a, a big part of how um, some groups at Microsoft are doing some of their analysis. So that's really been exciting for us to extend our tool chain. Our tool chain is all about our workflow, um, about how you can use sort of uh, uh, our sort of uh, centralized analytics team to deliver insights. So uh, we've built a, a nice, uh, clever front end that allows us to very uh, trivially distribute um, the SQL queries that that our analysts will write in a parameterizable way, such that all of the end users can can use that, get insights, improve upon the business. So I got I got to ask you, Dave and I were talking, we're looking at the list of, of interviews we're going to do this week, and, and looked at your LinkedIn profile, and you have a variety of uh, experience. You did an internship with the Eagles. That's right. Obviously, we're Patriots fans. A little bit of Eagle Patriots things going on today. So yeah, I'm but sure. uh, you know, you, you obviously get a PhD. You're you're, right. you're you're a stats guy, right? You're, you're so you got to like Billy Bean coming into the keynote today, right? I mean, sure. I mean, what do you, you know? That big data money ball thing. I mean, what's your take on that? Yeah, so um, obviously very exciting to be at the same conference as, as Billy Bean, sort of pioneer in really uh, using data effectively within sports. Um, after I finished my PhD, I did, um, I did work in the front office of the Eagles uh, for uh, the GM, uh, working on uh, sort of big data in the, well, it was, the funny part is that we would call that big data back then, but um, you know, uh, when, I, when I did my dissertation, if, if you had a data set with hundreds of thousands of observations, um, that was big data. If I don't see that nearly every second, there's something sort of weird going on. So, uh, you know, with uh, you know, this being a conference and about data, you know, there's a lot of, you know, back in the day, it was, it was very uh, traditionally in certain silos, but, uh, you know, obviously uh, the, the, the sports silo has sort of uh, erupted. I obviously did um, an internship uh, with Philadelphia where we were very uh, closely looking at all the, the prospects and using sort of all of their uh, physical attributes to build models around how likely we thought they would succeed. And stats is huge now with fantasy on the consumer side, and now with Moneyball kind of being the you know uh, the, the the domino that, that kicks in the new method. Everyone's been using data as a, as a competitive advantage. Obviously, that's pretty straightforward. But you also businesses now have the same issue, right? So how do you thread that? Obviously, sports obvious example is talent acquisition, is performance on the field. Mm -hmm. You can really make that case for the business as well as talent in terms of customer acquisition, personnel, and also business performance, value proposition, right? So how, how, do you get, how do you look at that the transition? Well, absolutely. Um, that's what we're all here for. We're all here for getting a competitive advantage and we think that um, data, data is really critical to that. Um, you know, I think back on the Yammer founders, um, David Sachs and Adam Pizzoni, and they had this vision that they wanted to develop um, B2B software just like uh, consumer software. And uh, you know, in part of uh, consumer development, you see a lot of data-driven development. So it's to um, figure out kind of what your customers are actually doing. Don't, don't hypothesize about it. Um, figure out what, what it is that they're using about your product, what's effective about your product, which features um, are working and not working within your product. Uh, and you know, we've been in Boston uh, for the past few days, uh, and we've got you know, Billy Bean speaking, which gives me sort of liberty to use a, a baseball analogy, which is, uh, you know, uh, it's sort of well known in software development that uh, great sort of Hall of Fame product managers are sort of like Hall of Fame baseball players, which is they're getting it right about a third of the time. So, uh, you know, what that means is if you can marginally improve on that, if you can essentially spend fewer cycles on what's not working and, uh, you know, I think that we like to, we do, you know, pretty much every feature that we release at Yammer um, is split tested, so is A-B tested. And um, obviously we, we keep the ones that prove out to be valuable. And this, this has sort of the direct impact of, we know what we release uh, works, but, uh, but there's sort of indirect impacts, which are it allows for a feedback loop to your pro uh, product managers and engineers. Um, to let them know what is effective. Um, it also sort of serves the ma sort of the, the big heroic uh, action is that it, it sort of uh, deters us from spending a lot of cycles on things that don't prove out to be valuable. Um, you know, I make the analogy often to, to a poker player. So like, uh, you know, in poker, um, the, the, the sort of amateurs and novices remember their hands, which they've won big pots, maybe through luck or maybe through so, supposed skill. 
Um, whereas the pros sort of brag about the hands that they were able to get away from, the hands that they didn't lose too much money on um, when they were potentially stuck. And uh, sort of taking that type of philosophy to your product development is going to give you, um, I think, a real competitive advantage over the long run. So do you look at, so you talk about A-B testing, do you look at ways in which you can actually increase the performance of your A-B testing and pr predict what's going to be, I mean, to the point of not doing things that are going to fail, do you, do you try to do that? Or do you just say, hey, it's so easy to A-B test, we could just you know, iterate those very quickly? Yeah, so I think, I think our job is to make A-B testing as cheap as possible. Again, sort of getting back to uh, the theme of making sort of uh, distributed analytics uh, very, very uh, cheap. So that means, obviously, the first part is that, one, anyone can do it in, this, in the sense of we want to build tools that enable um, you know, uh, anybody at the company to assess how effective a feature is. And that's uh, a value statement more than it is a, a cheap statement, but yeah. <laughs> but, but, but if it's expensive, nobody's going to adopt it and you're not going to get any value. But sure, okay. exactly. And then, uh, you know, I guess, I guess uh, you know, part of that is that you don't need, a, you know, a team of statisticians to tell you, you know, whether something is statistically significant. You just need to know whether, you know, what the actual, you know, in this case, p-value is for your test, and then you know the sort of uh, person that 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 owns that product decision can can sort of act with confidence or be be data driven there. And what gives you confidence? I asked I asked this question earlier, but but I'd like to hear your um, comment, Peter. What gives you confidence that data will give a competitive advantage that's sustainable? <clears throat> We're hoping to have Billy Bean on. I want to ask him. You know, do you have a sustainable competitive advantage with Moneyballers? Everybody else copycatting. Uh, so, you know, certainly I could imagine a world where um, the competitive advantages become more and more challenging um, to find. You know, in, in baseball that, you know, it may have been very easy to identify um, where the sort of mispricings were on the offensive side of the ball because um, that's easily identifiable. Whereas on the defensive side of the ball, that maybe is a much more challenging data problem. So you might have to start sort of leaving green fields and going into sort of a little bit uh, more difficult pastures. I, I think, you know, for us, how do we know that it's working? Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 always, it's, it's always weird to ask the measurer, uh, how do you measure yourself? Um, but I think the, the answer is a couple things that, um, one, uh, the, the services are in demand. I think that the, the most important sort of, uh, you know, we're a big believer in revealed preference, that people actually um, want to use your tools, want to take advantage of the things that you put your energies and efforts into and believe are having an effect. Um, you can you can notice the sort of lifts associated with the um, with the tests that you were part of, um, but th that's not really a proof statement because there's no sort of alternative universe where you get to see it sort of played out um, both ways. So it's very hard to actually um, uh, measure one's impact. But there are some domains like uh, marketing where you can actually look at your customer acquisition costs and you can see how different optimizations and investing more in a, in a certain type are going to actually have meaningful impacts on your bottom line. So talk a little bit about how you use Vertica. I mean, give us, paint a picture of your environment and you know, your architecture. Sure. Uh, so, you know, we've been Vertica customers for a long, a long time. And, and the, the story that I've been telling at this conference uh, is that, you know, when we were a startup, uh, we started out on a half a terabyte license. Uh, and, um, and then they, they asked me to predict in a year how much we would need. And uh, you know, I had sort of a low, medium, and high, and then ridiculously high estimate. And of course, um, my estimates were terrible, and we ended up sort of being an order of magnitude above uh, my ridiculously high estimate. Um, what you find with data is that it's very addictive. You find that um, you know, if you're able to sort of start small and get a customer base that really likes it, they're just going to say, well, can you, can you also track this? Can you also track that? Um, Vertica's in incredible. Um, Speed has allowed us to do a lot of uh, ad hoc querying and um, do it in very, very short iteration cycles. And that's where um, you're able to derive that value from, from your sharp uh, data analysts and data scientists. Okay, so, so maybe add, can you add a little color to sort of what your environment looks like and Sure. I mean, yeah, we've got uh, you know we've got 16 nodes, and you know we have um, again uh, data flowing in from a number of uh, different sources mm -hmm. across the company. Um, you know, we 
we uh, have actually a nice platform where our, um, our sort of data analysts and data scientists act as data architects um, in the sense of uh, they're close to the customer and the analysis, so they know exactly what, um, what columns are going to be needed. What are the new columns? Uh, and effectively, they're writing their own uh, ETLs and for figuring out which data is, is the useful data that we need to keep moving the business forward. Awesome. What's the biggest analytic surprise you've learned from the enterprise? Some have been critical of the whole up adoption. You have Jive, you have Yammer, you guys are out there pioneering. Now it seems to be swinging back. Some have criticized the growth. I'm saying it's too hard, it's unstructured, a lot of different structured, unstructured data. And same argument enterprise search had back in the day. Um, turning around, growing, still great. What's the biggest surprises that you, you've seen? Well, I mean, uh, the data. So, so certainly um, Yammer, Yammer's still been uh, growing. Uh, you know, obviously when you look at that distribution, that crazy sort of right-tailed distribution of, of who's posting. So we have, um, we're a little bit different uh, than a lot of your social networks that have that one nine ninety rule. Um, we have actually a lot uh, sort of uh, more broad-reaching contributors, um, which makes a lot of sense um, in the work context, that you're trying to surface your experts, you're trying to um, have a number of uh, you know, different people contribute to that conversation. Um, one of the things that's also really been surprising for us is just how impactful um, a business leader can be on a network. So one of the things that we find uh, relates uh, quite closely to our network's health is um, how engaged uh, some of the leadership is. Because what's nice about Yammer is we have the sort of bottom-up growth, that the growth that happens through, uh, through inviting colleagues and through that virality. But, um, but what, you, what you'll see is when you're having meaningful, voluntary interactions with the leadership, one, you're able to surface people um, skills uh, in incredible ways and identify who can be that sort of next generation of leaders. Um, but, but, uh, but in addition, um, it's, just, it's great to, ha to see that engagement at, uh, all across the company, empowering everybody, working openly. Um, that's things that we take a lot of pride in. Final question for you, then we'll break. But um, what, what's, what's, what needs to get worked on in terms of, obviously, it's still early on in this game. Obviously, we're now mobile's going crazy, cloud, social, and big data kind of bundled in, which makes sense. I mean, social data, social interactions is data, but still, you know, implied data, real data, you know, explicit data, implicit data. What, what still needs, what are the, what's the key areas that need a lot of work on the analytics side? Is it the visualization? Is it more back end? Is it the, the science? Is it machine learning? Is it some of the, uh, you know, um, the voice stuff? I mean. Yeah, I, you know, I still see uh, a lot of opportunities in just the basics of counts. I mean, again, we have people that really have the ability to do um, uh, deep modeling work, deep visualization work that have passion for it, and that is what's sexy when you see it. But in reality, we're still um, a plumbing shop. We're a shop that you know is trying to uh, find clean data, to capture data in a, in a replicable, uh, auditable, uh, you know, clean way. And I think that um, I, I still <laughs> find we, that. As Dave and I talk about, it's like, you know, fishing, you want the clean fish and the good fish, right? You want the good data. <laughs> I mean, data quality has always been a challenge. Uh, and and <laughs> continues to be so. Uh, you know, I think, you know, uh, there's sort of a line about, you know, novices, uh, you know, talk about, uh, you know, an analysis that this is about really uh, strategically um, devoting the right cycles to um, building that clean pipeline. A lot of different approaches. Peter, thanks for coming on. I'll see you guys are a great company. I'll see you sold on a great, uh, great exit as a startup to Microsoft, which is now reorganized and Balmer's last stand. He's going to go full throttle, um, getting everything kind of put into its right, organized way. Not a lot of silos anymore at Microsoft, so good luck with everything there. And obviously, really I'm bullish on Skype and Xbox and what you guys are doing. And Microsoft moves stuff into the cloud. You think you fix, fix the edge and make that software work. You got Azure, and you guys have a lot of opportunities, so congratulations on that. And thanks for sharing your, your perspective. It. We love data. Data quality is the key. This is theCUBE, sharing data with you. That's good data from the data analytics man himself, Peter. Thank you for joining theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Pleasure. Thanks, guys.